Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. Today I'm going to be charting all of the logs and the measurements that I had written down on them. I have a real simple chart here that I use. Each log has a number and I will be marking on my chart all of the sizes, butts, tips, the middle and the length of the logs on my chart. And when I start figuring out where I want to put each log, then I can refer back to my chart and I can go from that and put each log where I want it in the wall. Now we're going to go down here to the log yard. You can probably see some of the logs down here. There's some more back over here. I have a total of 45 logs and they've all been peeled and ready to go except for getting everything on the chart and that's what I'm doing now. So let's get started. This was the first set of logs that uh, I had gotten cut and brought out and peeled and then later we got the other logs that are over there on that rack over there and they're all peeled and numbered and if you see and i have mentioned this before each log has a number on it there's one two three four all the way down i think there's 24 logs in this rack right here and you can see it's log number one i measured at the butt and it measures 15 inches it was 17 foot eight inches long and right in the middle between the tip and the butt I measured it and it was 13 and three quarters now this is the number that I will work with the most although I do take in consideration the size of the tip which is down here and it is a 13 inch tip and there's, there's one thing I want to caution you about when you're doing this doing your measurements don't measure the end of the log come back all a foot or so from the end to get your measurement and then write that on there on the butt where i measured this 15 inches i came back from the end to where approximately the inside shoulder of the log would be in the wall and that's where i took my measurement and you can see there's a knot i didn't measure at the knot i get on one side or the other and preferably right about here is where I measured this and it was 15 inches and so I wrote that down right here and it was the butt now I'm using a chart now this is just a real real simple thing uh, just on a on a uh, on a legal pad and you can see I've got the number the tip the middle the butt the length and if there's anything about that log that I want to write a comment about I've got that column where I can do that I've got these numbered all the way down on this page down to number 28. But what I will do, I'll take this log, which is number one, and I'll write the tip down, the size of it, what it is in the middle, what the butt width is, and the length of it. I'm not sure this is going to show up real well on this camera, but that log has a slight crown to it from butt to tip. And that is a comment that I actually wrote down on my on my chart now i'll do every log like this and if there's something about the log that uh, i want to keep in mind or make a note of i can put it in that column and i've got all the all the numbers here and i'll i'll get all of them marked and uh, charted now this log here number five this is the log when it was on the at the mill being sawed it's the one that had the metal cable in it right here. Now I have to remember that and I drew a little circle around it so I would see that. And when I work this log out, I have to really watch this piece of metal where it actually, this log will be in the wall. I'll have to pay close attention to that because that piece of metal there could really destroy some of my tools and I do not want that. I've got all the logs on my chart that's in this rack and I've got a few comments there so now I'm going to move over to these other two racks and finish this up now, 
when you look at the numbers on these logs, you can see there's quite a, a range difference there's in the in the width of the midpoint. We're in some smaller logs right here. And then there's some that are quite a bit bigger than what these are. Jumps from 11 to 13, 11 and a quarter. What we'll be doing as we put these logs in the wall, we'll be working from these numbers that we charted and uh, we will be averaging the logs, the width of them at the middle and that will determine where they're placed in the wall and we'll start with the bigger ones on the bottom rounds and we'll gradually work our way to the smaller logs as we go up the wall that's the way the old frontiersman did it as, as the wall got higher it was easier to use a smaller log and it was they could handle the bigger ones down lower and that's we'll, what we'll be doing, the same exact thing. We'll start with the big ones and work away to the smaller ones. And as we start putting these up, cutting the notches and getting them ready to put on the wall, I'll show you how I come up with the notch dimension to determine how to figure how big the notch needs to be. And we'll get into that a little bit later. It's a good idea to get an extra round or maybe two rounds of logs when you're if you're having to buy your logs or order them from a sawmill and that gives you some that you can maybe cull out for some particular reason that you don't want to use them if they're like this particular log here number 26 has got a huge crown in it although i can cut that up in shorter pieces and use that that's too good of a log to waste even though it's got the crown i can cut that up and use it down on the lower rounds i'd like to take this time just a moment and i would like to welcome our new subscribers and thank you for coming by and subscribing to our channel we do hope that you can glean some information that will help you and in, in your cabin build i just appreciate you so much god bless you